Hello, I'm Tom from Permission to Travel. Cruising can be very overwhelming. I understand that. And so when you're doing a cruise for the first time, it gets triply as overwhelming because you just don't know what's going on. So today what we're talking about is some tips for first time cruisers. Uh, there's things I've heard over the years that people do that kind of makes things run smoother. Things that I've done across all of my cruises that help things run smoother. So I'm just gonna give you some advice on that. So uh, welcome to the channel and we'll get started now. So first thing is always research, 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 research. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're researching everything you wanna look at your cruise line. You wanna make sure that the cruise line has uh, the things included that you want to have it included. You wanna make sure that uh, the areas, the itineraries, like everything is included and that cruise line provides you what you want. You wanna look at the ship. Every cruise line has multiple ships, and so you want to look at what you want. So a lot of cruise lines have small ships, they have larger ships, they have medium ships, and so you want to look at what size ship you want. So you want to make sure you research what's available on the ship, what things you'll do, what things you won't do, and try to find one that has a balance between mostly things that you will want to do. Another thing that research is your ports. Obviously, that's very important when you're doing cruising, and so making sure that you look at the ports, make sure you research things to do, make sure you look at all of those things, because you want to make an informed decision on the ports, and you don't want to go to ones that you're not going to be happy with. Finally, you want to research your weather. You want to look at certain times of years that you want to go. If you don't like cold, you don't want to go to countries that are going to be in the colder time in the winter. And so you want to make sure you're going places. You want to watch where you don't really want to do stuff during hurricane season and things like that. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to that. Um, you don't ever want to pick a itinerary based off of one port. You want to look at the overall picture uh, and choose one based off of multiple ports. For very rare occasions here and there, you will see that a port will get canceled. Uh, there will be rough waters, there will be weather, and, you know, a system in the area, something like that, and so they'll cancel a port. If you're going for just one city and one port, you're going to run the risk of that one being canceled and then you're going to be very upset because you didn't get to go. So you want to make sure you look at the whole itinerary, look at everything that's there and make sure you get to do what you want to do. Uh, the next thing is you want to pack with your dress code in mind. You want to look at how you want to dress. So like I was saying in another video, uh, we have formal nights, things like that. You don't have to dress for those. You can actually go and do things at the uh, buffets. You can do stuff at you know the stands. You can do different things if you don't want to dress up. So look at the dress code. Look at what you want to do. Next thing is you want to choose a cruise line as well as a cabin that's going to fit within your budgetary needs. The big thing behind this is you want to fit within your budget. You don't want to strap yourself and overwhelm yourself. Another thing behind this is a lot of people look at you're going to be out of the room a lot. And so a lot of people will do the cheaper rooms because you don't need to pay a lot. Some people like being in their rooms a lot. I tend to like balconies so that I can sit on the balcony and read at night. And so that's something for me is I like to sit in my room and listen uh, to the ocean as I'm reading. So I tend to lean towards doing balconies. And uh, when I want to go a little bit cheaper than what I do is I do an inside cabin. And then I look at doing something that is uh, where I can go to the adults on the area, go somewhere where I can listen to the ocean during the night uh, outside of the room. So it's up to you on how you want to do it. Um, then you always want to look up your uh, drink packages. You want to look up the unlimited dining. You want to look up the different options. So unlimited dining is when you do the specialty dining. Unlimited dining, you don't pay extra for each restaurant. It's just covered under the one price. Or you can do an a la carte where you just pick one and you just pay it as you go. Um, but you just be one flat fee for all of that. Unlimited dim dining covers all of them and you can do every night. Uh, your other option is just you stick with the main dining room and the free stuff. Totally up to you, whatever fits within your budget. On the other side is also the drinking packages. So those drinking packages, packages that just include sodas. There's ones that include alcohol. Some have where it includes uh, shakes and stuff like that. So you look at whatever works best again within your budget and you research the different options. Each cruise line has a different option. So you look at which one works best for you. After that, uh, you want to make sure you understand all your service charges, all your gratuities. Uh, there's a lot of information uh, to go with in all of that. Service charges and gratuities basically fall into there's an extra fee that you pay at the end of the cruise per person per day for tipping. And so you don't usually have to tip extra. Uh, it's usually included in the bill. Uh, and so that's where um, you just watch for all that because that's where the service fees and the gratuities and that stuff comes from. Every cruise line has a different fee, uh, a different rate. Uh, they're usually, uh, at the most I've seen, is like $18 per day. And the lowest I've seen is like 7 or $8. Uh, and again, cruise lines are all different. I haven't done every cruise line in the world. Uh, so I'm sure there's ones that are above and below. 
Uh, so you look at that, research that, make sure you have that budgeted in uh, because that will automatically be charged to you. You can go to the front desk and tell them that you don't want it and change the number, uh, but that's how people make their money and so we wanna be careful with that. Um, after that, you want to um, always, always, always arrive the night before your cruise. If you miss your cruise and it set sail, you are stuck and you are on your own. And so you want to go the night before you want to get a hotel. You want to be able to get in. You want to be able to get relaxed and not have to be rushed around if your flight is delayed. It gets really stressful. So one of the big things that I always tell people is you want to fly in or drive in the night before. So that is one huge piece that you want to make sure you follow. Um, after that, uh, you want to look at your short excursions. Uh, shore excursions are an extra fee to be able to do things in the ports. Um, there's all different kinds of things that you can do. One of my favorites is to go cave tubing. Uh, I love to go cave tubing, so whenever it's offered in a country, that is a shore excursion I do. Uh, one th big thing is you can do a shore excursion uh, through the cruise ship, or you can do it through your, a private tour that you would get on after you get off or get, go with once you get off the boat. Your Cruise one is going to guarantee you getting back to the boat. And so I really encourage people to do that just because if your tour runs late, the boat will wait for you because you it was sanctioned and done through the ship. If you do one of the private ones, if there's an accident, if there's traffic, I've heard a horror story of a taxi driver not knowing where to drop them off and they almost missed their cruise ship because of that. Uh, you don't want to risk any of that. So during the private tours, while cheaper, they tend to cause problems because we get really stressed about coming back. There's many YouTube videos. There's been many things lately about people missing their ship. And that's the number one reason why we do is we don't budget in that time. Okay. Um, then after that, you want to uh, board the ship as early as possible. Uh, big thing behind that is uh, you want to be able to tour the ship a little bit. You want to be able to walk around, get your bearings, see where things are. Uh, usually for most cruise lines, your room is not ready right away. And so it really just comes down to finding a place to sit neat, kind of getting your bearings, getting the size of the ship, learning where things are. Uh, so you want to try to get on as early as possible. It just depends on when your cruise is leaving. So sometimes you can get on as early as 11 or 12. Sometimes it's a little bit later. It just depends on when your cruise is leaving. When you do your check-in, you'll usually pick a check-in time uh, for the cruise and then you go from there. Uh, after that is you doing your muster drill. The muster drill is something that is required for everybody to do. There's no way to get out of it. And so what I always say to do is you want to get on and you want to go do that right away. Uh, you go do that and then you're done. Um, some of them, uh, some of the cruise lines, they have it online now. So you can actually go on the cruise lines app. Uh, Royal Caribbean I know is one that does this. And uh, you go on the app and you uh, do the muster drill, that information. And then when you get to the ship, you just have to go to where you would your designated spot would be, show them that you did it. And then they check off that they saw you and then it's done. Others, you have to go meet somewhere and they do all the drills and everything with you right there, but everybody has to go and do it. And so it's something that uh, they will not leave until everybody on the ship has completed it. And so you wanna make sure you do it as soon as possible. Uh, another thing is you wanna look at places to eat. Um, you want to look at the buffet, you want to look at the main dining areas, you want to look at the specialty restaurants, you want to look at what you want. And you have to remember to fit within your budget, you know, do whatever you need to do. Most people that I know will just go and do the free stuff the whole time and not do the extra things and the extra specialty diners. I like to do some of them, so it just depends on what everybody likes. After that, um, you want to make sure you're looking at your cruise daily planner. And so every day there's a planner that gets released. Most of them are on through the apps now. Some of them, they'll still be paper ones. You just have to go down to your guest services and get information about it. But you want to look at that. That is like your uh, golden ticket for everything on the cruise. Once you look on there, it has all the dates, all the times, everything that's going to be done and available for the day. Uh, opening and closing of shops, opening and closing of restaurants, everything's in there. And so that's basically your like golden thing that you want to have and you want to know and have with you at all times because it gives you an answer to everything and then you can plan out your day accordingly from there. Um, after that, uh, big thing, um, it's kind of sad, but big thing is the internet. Um, nowadays, we all like our internet. We all want our internet. Uh, internet on cruise ships is very expensive and it's very slow. And so that's one thing to keep in mind that you wanna make sure that you're, you're preparing for that. Most people will still get the internet um, or do some version of it. There's some cruise lines have different speeds. Uh, the fastest speed is still slow. Um, but you want to make sure that you're doing that because it keeps you connected to the world. You do not want to keep your phone on 
Uh, once you connect to that boat, uh, the fees from all of the, the internet and phone companies are so high. Uh, I have gotten it once where I had to pay an extra like hundred and something dollars on a phone bill once because I made a phone call and I thought was I was on the internet, but I wasn't. And it was like $6.35 a minute and I talked for like 20 minutes. Um, and so that's not something that you really want to do. Uh, same thing, text messages become like 30 cents a text message. And so you want to be careful with all of that. Uh, after that, um, you want to book any add-on packages, any shore excursions, any drink packages, anything like that. You want to do it before you get on the boat. Every cruise line offers discounts. They want you to buy everything before you get on the boat. And so it's really important to look at that because there's sales, there's different things like that. You have to keep watching and looking. Uh, sometimes the best sales are Black Friday, sometimes they're not. So you just have to kind of watch and see and look at that. Um, and it's usually based on the cruise line when and how they offer those different discounts and, and all that fun stuff. Uh, but a big thing is you want to make sure that you buy it beforehand. Um, you want to uh, download all your apps or your movies, anything you want to do on the boat, you want to download at the hotel the night before or at the week before you don't want to download it once you get on the boat because the internet is slow and because you again run into that problem with looking at, you know, disconnecting from the internet and then using your data and stuff like that and then you get charged a lot. So you want to make sure that you're taking care of that and doing all those things beforehand so you don't run any risk of any of those fees. Next thing, probably one of the hugest ones, is to make sure that you're packing everything that's essential for you to have in a carry-on. So when you get there, you're going to have to check your big bag uh, with a porter, um, and they will take that bag, and you will not see it until it gets delivered to your room later that evening. So anything that you'll need, so that is medicines, medical equipment, a bathing suit, um, sunscreen, anything that's important to you that you're going to need before you see your package. It's usually not delivered until right before dinner, um, right around dinner time. Um, I've had ones that have come well after dinner before. And so we just want to make sure you have everything that's important to you there. You want to make sure you have your passport with you. You want to make sure that you have any valuables with you. You want to make sure that you have your cash with you, your IDs, any, anything that's important you want to have with you and don't leave in your big suitcase. That's one of the hugest things that people do and it always ends up backfiring because it causes us a lot of problems especially if it's passport related or some type of way to check in on the when we get there um after that is be prepared for motion sickness just in case not everybody gets motion sick uh, like i've said in multiple videos i tend to get motion sick and seasick fairly easily i always have my stuff ready it's in the carry-on um, always have my stuff ready just in case i have only really needed to take and get to patches once uh, other than that, it's usually just my C-bands and stuff like that, um, and I've needed them maybe two or three times now out of 12 to 13 cruises. So still slim, but you want to be prepared just in case, especially for your first time, because you don't know how you're going to respond. And so you want to make sure that you're following and doing that. Another big one is to make sure that you do any special requests beforehand. So if you're going to need water for your CPAP, if you're going to need an extension cord for your CPAP or any type of medical device, you're not allowed to bring extension cords with you onto the boat. They have to be provided by the cruise line. You can bring uh, little chargers that you can plug into the wall, but you can't bring extension cords and you can't bring power strips. And so the big piece to that is uh, you want to make sure that you're doing those requests ahead of time. Most cruise lines will give you free water. They will give you that extension cord and this way you won't have to worry about bringing it with you. And then also it's already provided for you and it's free and included. So after that, um, and I kind of touched on this already is having all your cruise documents in one place. So you want to have it with you in your carry-on. You have that one local spot. You don't want to have to like dig through and try to find it all. Just keep everybody's all together. And it's really easy to find, pull it out when it's needed. You usually only have to show it once or twice. And then after that, you're good to go. Uh, last or second to last one is to use a travel agent. Uh, cruising is different than land travel. For land travel, I do not use a travel agent. Uh, but for cruising, I usually, if not all the time, I've used a travel agent just because little things can happen. Things can, there can be mistakes. There can be little things that happen and the travel agent is there to help you. They get paid after you do the cruise. So they want to make sure that you get on the cruise. And so, uh, just following through and having a travel agent is so, so, so important because they will call the cruise line. They know what to say and do instead of you just sitting there being confused and getting the same answer over and over, they can call and get things taken care of from their end. And the last one, um, which I've said in most of my videos, is get travel insurance. 
Travel insurance is so important when you travel, uh, especially when it's international and especially for cruises. If you miss a port, it can actually get you your port fees refunded, uh, covers any medical illnesses or anything like that. It will uh, reimb it actually reimburses medical insurance, I should be specific. Uh, after that, um, you look at if there's you miss a flight, if you miss the boat, if anything happens, it helps cover some of that stuff. Again, like I've said before, you wanna make sure that you look at the policy and that you read it before you buy because you wanna see what's covered. Some cover pre-existing, some don't. Some cover uh, medical expenses up to a certain amount. Some don't cover unless it goes above a certain amount. So you wanna make sure that you're doing that and going from there. But travel insurance is the most important thing out of everything that I said. I will say it on every video. Travel insurance for whenever you're international. Um, so that is actually all the tips that I have. I know that there's some that I left out. So please, please comment. Let me know if there's any extra ones that you have for my veteran cruisers. Uh, if there's any questions for my newbie cruisers, if there's any questions that you have, please, please comment. And then I will respond back and get you some information. Uh, please like, please subscribe. Keep going with uh, our building our channel here. And we will continue to work together as a team. And I thank you for watching. And I hope that you have an absolutely great day. And remember to keep traveling. Give yourself that permission to travel. All right. Thanks. Have a good day.